everybody. Welcome to another round of coffee and questions. This is what we're going to talk about today. I'm going to turn it over to Charlie. He's going to ask the question, but we're going to talk about how to unstick wood that gets caught in your hole saw when you're using it. So take it away, Charlie. Ask the question. Let's get right to it. Hey, handyman. Is there a way when I'm using my hole saw cutting bits to get that plug out easier? I know that there are slots on the side where you can use a screwdriver and try to push and you know and play around and get it out but is there an easier way all right right here i'm holding up one of the signs that i've made and you'll see in each one of the four corners it's notched out so the question is is how did i create that notching and is there any easy way to do it so i'm going to take you over to the drill press i'll set it up and i'll show you give me just a sec Okay folks, I'm back. So what do we do? We get a piece of plywood. You can see this is my drill press base right here. Okay, and that's screwed down of course onto the metal one, but it just makes a bigger surface for me. It's just what I did. You could do the same. I rounded the corners. I used my random orbital or my belt sander and I cleaned it up with nice round edges. But this is the base of it. I can swivel this any way I want because it sits in the corner of my garage. But then, <clears throat> I got a piece of just OSB here. You can use plywood or pretty much whatever you got. Nice flat surface. Then what I did is I took a couple pieces of just pine like molding or whatever you have laying around and I set them on here so that it went in an L. I put my screws way back away from it through into that OSB. One, two, two on each. Then I went ahead and I have my hole saw here. This is a two inch cutting one. It can be whatever size you want. And I lined it up, okay? And then I came down like this and I figured out about where I wanted it. Now, you're gonna have to clamp this down to the table. I clamp it in a couple of different areas like here and here. You know, I clamp it. And then you figure out where you're gonna come down and you go ahead and you cut right through it. Now, after you cut through it, these pieces are gonna be gone. And then what you're left with is this and you have these two little arcs here. You will play around. You can move these in and out, play around, do what you want. But once you have it, I have about three or four of these jigs set up for different sized hole saws. Okay, so then with this clamped on here, and I have a project now, what happens is this. I'm gonna use this scrap piece of wood to show you. I come in here like this. Okay, it's clamped down. And let me show you. See, the drill press is running, so now it's clamped down. We're gonna say it's not clamped down, but I'm gonna hold it, it's just a big piece of wood. Now let me show you a trick. You see all these different methods of how to get that plug out of there. shut it off and now it's off and now you can see this didn't wedge in there that loose look I'm just, I can, it just comes right out it's probably from the continuous motion up and down with this thing it hones it out a little bit it doesn't make this wedge up in there okay so that's all there is to it this is a real simple jig to make it's fast and it's easy I've got it for two inch I think one inch one and a half I got them for varying sizes and I just leave them over where I keep my jigs. And then when I want to, you see this nice little, uh, you know, cutout that it did if you're making a sign. Okay, so let's go back over. Let's do some questions and answers. Okay, so question and answer time, folks. Um, one of the questions is, you know, is there any other way other than what you showed to get those, you know, stubborn plugs out of there? Well, you can dig them out. Running the screw through there, like I showed you in the photograph, I mean, you know, okay, I mean, that's one way. The other way, of course, is through the slots in the side. 
Another way is the method I showed you. Now somebody also said you could put a little wax up in there or something and you know use lubricant. I don't do that. I mean, I just put it on there really. I don't I don't put wax, I don't put any oil or anything like that on there because it's going to interfere with the finish on the sign. So I don't do it that way. Um, I use it just by going up and down, up and down like I showed you. I'm not in a rush. I mean, as you do that, it comes out, falls out for the most part, or I just play around with my fingers, I mean, it comes out. So to me, that's the fastest, easy way to do it. How much sanding do you need to do afterwards? Uh, that's up to you. I mean, I don't know. And somebody says, well, how are you going to get into those, you know, those curved areas? Well, let me show you. Hold on. You can buy these. You can buy these off Amazon, probably eBay, a lot of places. I'll try to leave the link below. And they come in different diameters. It has a set screw on here. I loosen this and I just take a piece of flat sandpaper and I put it in this groove. I wrap it around. I put it back into the other groove, I tighten this here, and that snugs the sandpaper onto this mandrel. When this is in my drill press, or you could use a cordless or a corded drill, it doesn't matter, and it's spinning, you can do those corners real nicely. You just have to hold it evenly. And I have a hole that goes through a piece of like pretty thick wood, just a hole that this will go down through. Then I lock the drill press like that. And then on my table, I just bring the wood up and I do, you know, that inside corner like this. And voila, it's done. You don't have to be super precise on the sign making thing, but if you did have something that you had to do with precision, get a thick piece of wood, like uh, let's say a two by six or a two by eight, drill a hole, like maybe one and a half inches with a hole saw all the way through it. Put this on your drill press, bring it down through that hole just a little ways and stop. Sand on it for a little bit. You can clean it off with a brush or you can bring it down a little bit more, bring it up, play around. These work. Um, I've had this one on here for quite a while. So that's a good method for sanding out those corners. Okay, to answer your question, I use 80 or 120 grit. A lot of times I think I use 120 just because I don't want to have to go back and keep sanding through a bunch of grits and on those corners like that because I'm going to put a film finish in there, 150 tops, okay, to give you an answer. So 120, 150 is what I think I have loaded on all four of the mandrels. They come in kits, you get them in different sizes. I don't know. It's pretty cool. They're pretty slick. They work real good. Like I said, drills or drill press. Okay. Any other questions? Um, on the hole saws, well, I've got both bimetal and I have some that are meant for wood. Um, of course, if you start drilling through steel repeatedly over and over and over, eventually, yeah, they're going to start to dull out. Uh, can you sharpen them? I suppose that you can, and no, I don't. I just discard them, and if I tear up, let's say, a one and a half inch one, I just go buy another one and a half inch one, but that's me. I mean, other people may say, well, you know. Hey, you can sit there with a little hand file and sharpen them up. Um, yeah, go ahead. I don't want to. So uh, I'm not criticizing anybody that does. I just don't want to spend my time doing that. So I, that's my answer to your question. And like I said, no lubricants. Well, unless you're doing steel. Then, yeah, you better use lubricants or you'll burn up those bits and those blades fast. Also, if you're doing it on steel, take your drill press or even your hand drill and you want to slow that speed way down. I mean, you don't know how many times I see people, whether it's a hand drill or a drill press, I mean, they just got that sucker at full speed and they're just cranking down on it or pushing on it hard. And then they try and tell me, um, you know, like with these titanium bits, you know, that we were talking about in a previous video out of Harbor Freight, oh, they're junk, they're just pieces of shit. No, you just don't know what you're doing. If you use things correctly, uh, let's talk about steel and you going at a slow speed and you are using cutting oil and you're taking your time they will last you a long time before you have to replace them um, they come in a nice kit if you snap one just go buy that one drill but a lot of the real small sizes i buy them in groups of four for pilot holes and stuff just because i do end up breaking them uh, but that didn't mean the, the drill bit was crap. It's just what happens if you're doing a lot of drilling and you're using them a lot, these real thin bits can break on you easily. 
and I don't want to wait and have to go buy one, so I buy them in packs of two, three, four, five, whatever I have, and I just grab another one. Larger bits, you can buy them, like I said, in a single way if you need to. It just depends on what you're doing, how you're using them, and depend on what you want to buy. Hole saw bits, what do I recommend? Um, that's up to you. I have some by Lenox, some that are by Matco, and I have some Milwaukee's. I've kind of got a mixture of them. Some of them I got a garage sale, some of them I bought new. But I buy good quality hole saw bits. And the titanium ones, especially like I did on the last video, this Father's Day special, buy $50 worth of stuff, get you know the other, the whole kit, you know, the drill bits, the 29 piece for $5. You're not going to find that value anywhere. I said that in the video and somebody said, well, they buy better drill bits. So do I. But for $5, you won't find 29 drill bits. And it is a fairly good quality, like I said, for general use. So uh, whatever you think. I mean, but, you know, I picked it up. I have another set that I picked up when it wasn't on sale. So and they still I'm still using them. OK, so let's see anything else. So the question was, anyway, my phone rang, uh, sorry, the, phone, the question was, why would I make such a large base to put on my drill press out of, you know, that plywood? Not really part of the video, but I'll answer your question for you because I do larger projects and that small cast iron, you know, base top is okay, but I was always clamping like larger piece of plywood and stuff to it in order to do larger projects. So. I just went ahead and found a happy medium. I had some nice stuff laying around, cut it, rounded the corners, you know, found the screw holes, marked them from the bottom up, drilled them out, countersunk on the top, put some uh, like screw type bolts in there. And uh, yeah, I don't know, it's just a nice platform. You know, you wanna know how to do that in detail, drop me a comment. I mean, I suppose, I mean, I could go over it, but to me, it's really kind of a no brainer thing. Just find a nice piece of shot grade plywood or something like that set it on there, mark the holes from the bottom, figure out, you know, your length, your width, cut it, drill the holes, countersink, that's about it. All right, didn't mean for it to be a long video. I hope you click subscribe, I hope you keep following me, and I hope you like the short tips. I'm the Home Handyman. I will see you folks again soon. Bye-bye.